Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And tonight we have not only an awesome project, but we have a very special guest. We have Leia Amick back for her second Sessions appearance. Um, thanks to the release of her latest project, which is an incredible wall-mounted ladder mm -hmm. for storing clothes, blankets, hats, you name it. Yeah, a very tasteful way to toss your clothing instead of over the, what you say, you put that armchair out of, uh, into retirement. Yeah, exactly. The clothes chair. <laughs> the clothes chair. Um, <laughs> it's a big project. Uh, too big, I think, to manage on screen. So we have a little sample joint here. This is what we're going to work through today. Um, we'll show you the project shortly. But before we get started, let's bring Leia on just to say hello. 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 Hi. <laughs> thanks um, for having me back. Yeah, Good thanks so you. much. <laughs> Um, before we get started, I would love if you just introduced yourself and then we'll pull up your project and show everybody what we're looking at. Sure. Uh, Leah Amick. I'm a multidisciplinary designer. I call myself that because I do furniture as well as other product design. Uh, and I love woodworking and especially working with Shaper. <laughs> Thank you. You're one of our favorite Shaper users, I would oh, yeah. have to say. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's very sweet. Um, let's go ahead and pull up this project, Goose, so everybody knows what they're working on this week uh, after you watch the show and you jump right into the shop, right? So this is the Array Wall Closet. This is by Leia. Um, and let's click through a couple of these photos. You can see on the wall, really tasteful, just beautiful woodworking on its own. Really flexible storage. We have some really cool joinery. So we have these angled half lap joints that we're going to show you how to cut. And then also this crazy, cool, really tasteful single dovetail that we're going to cut today as well. Yeah. Um, so just a couple quick notes before we get started. Um, this is a live show. So we're going to do some live cutting with Shaper Origin, our handheld CNC router. Um, during the show, if you have any questions for us or for Leia, because Leia is going to be here for the whole show, even if she's not on screen the entire time. Um, if you have questions for us or for Leia, drop them in the text chat. We have Ted working in the chat today, and he's going to send those questions to us for a live Q&A at the end of the show. We also have giveaways that we do every show. To enter that giveaway, you must answer the poll question, which is going to come up during our mid-show break. Pop up right there on your screen. Go ahead and answer that question, and it puts your name in the running to win some of our giveaways at the end. Nice. Uh, and we're going to talk about this halfway, but I just want to mention it at the top that this is our spring deal happening right now. Yes. That's going from now through March 27th. We will talk about that more during the break, um, but I'm just going to toss that out there, sprinkle that in. Well, not to mention show. we have another uh, announcement during the mid-show break. Let's just tease all the announcements. Okay. We have the box challenge winner's announcement coming about halfway through. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. But we're going to go through that halfway through the show as well. Yeah. And, and I'm now realizing we should have put it in like a fancy envelope. But that would have been great. We're just going to show you pictures on exactly. the Internet. But they are beautiful boxes. And we got some really cool pictures to click through. Um, so without further ado, we have a dovetail to cut. I think we're going to cut that one first. We are. Um, all right. So again, this is, if you can recognize it, this is the top portion, shortened, of course, of our wall closet. So we're going to focus on the dovetail and the half lap, but let's start with cutting the dovetail out of the top back, bra back bracket. This profile is cut with Origin just on the shelf. Gives you that nice splay or that angle, which gives you that really tasteful splay all the way down the closet. Once you're at this point, it's just like cutting a tenon, really. We're on workstation here. We're gonna level out that top piece and against our two registration pins, slide that up to the top and clamp in place. Nice, and do you have this one gridded already? I don't. You don't, so we're gonna walk through that. So um, we're gonna grid and scan all this stuff. Uh, if you want a more thorough walkthrough of scanning, gridding, like origin from the bare basics, we did a three-part series on a pretty substantial build project, the candy machine build. And in that, we walk you through 
just cutting with origin from with, from a bare scan kind of the quickest way to cut with origin and then we add in things like gridding for repeatable um, coordinate system alignment repeatable fixturing using workstation all kinds of stuff like that yeah uh we always try to use the back end of that engraving bit for our grids because it's going to give us the best possible grid And for this one, we're going to do a backside grid. Go ahead and drop it into the space behind your material. And be sure to change your reference edge. Boom. 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 Now we can import. We're working on the right side of the closet. So, come down here to the dovetail right. Snap that to zero, zero, thanks to the custom anchor point. Blam. And we're going to do pretty much, we're going to do everything today with the, the standard quarter inch router bit that comes with Origin. All your material is three quarter thick. Leia was very thoughtful in designing this whole project around that bit, which is awesome and we greatly appreciate. Yeah, really handy. I like to Z touch directly on my material. And we're going to do this in a couple of depth passes. down to a depth of 0.78. Now that's intentionally on the deeper side because you want that dovetail to protrude ever so slightly so you can knock it down flush. Just a little bit. And we can show this off on a closer camera too. Hopefully. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Easier to bring that dovetail in than to bring the rest of the material down to a short dovetail. All right. I always like to use the calculator whenever possible. 0.78 divided by two. Go through and do this in two depth passes. Cool. See you in a minute. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome to Shaper Sessions. Today we're talking about Leia Amix's latest Shaper Hub project, the Array Hanging Wall Closet. Um, we're cutting this really cool dovetail that she designed. And if this is your first time seeing Origin or watching Sessions, welcome. Uh, this is a live show, and we are cutting with Origin, the handheld CNC router. So what's happening now is Jake is clearing out this pocket. Inside the pocket, Origin works just like a standard plunge router, where the spindle is locked to the center of Origin's corrective range. Uh, hang on to that word. And when Jake bumps into the edge of the pocket, you can see that correction action kick in where it actually prevents Jake from going over the edge of the pocket and prevents him from, you know, screwing up his work. Basically, it's a router with autocorrect. So we're going to go ahead and switch from that pocket to an inside cut. Now, the change here is that when you're on that inside cut, Origin is going to follow right on that dotted line, and it's going to bring this cut right down to its final dimension for this dovetail. Beautiful. Yeah, check that out. I tell you what, that's a fresh quarter inch cutter. Few things bring me more joy than a brand new cutter. Is that fur, too? No, this is European beach. Oh, beach. It smells good. Something about it smells good. Yeah, Do look at that. Close up on this guy over here. So flat on the back, a little shoulder on the front. Sweet. Cool. I okay. mean, that's one. If you were doing this and making the whole thing, you would go ahead and make all of the dovetails. We're doing this sample joint just as kind of a sample of what you would need to do to make this whole project um but this is really the fundamentals of it there's two types of joint there's this dovetail joint 
and then there's this half lap joint. So we're going to cut the whole dovetail now, and then we'll come back to that half lap after the break and talk a little bit more about that. But those are the two most difficult things in here, and the PDF that Leia made really walks you through uh, in really nice steps how to do this whole thing. Oh, man. We're also suckers for really nice PDFs, and you nailed it, Leia. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Bringing out the shelf. This is the shelf that comes with Workstation. Don't be fooled. We just have another piece of MDF that's a little bit bigger. Just stuck to the top just of it. Stuck to the top of it. We used to say make a whole new shelf and put the screw holes in it, but then we figured out you can just stick one to the top. Anyway, I got tired of drilling those holes. <laughs> <laughs> we make a lot of shelves around here. All right. We're going to grab our top corner right, which is the shorter piece. It's a little oversized, but it is um, the exact width, two inches, but it's a little oversized lengthwise. Mm -hmm. And what's the reason for that oversize, Jake? Um, we're going to cut both ends off. So really, we're, we just want to make sure we have room. We don't have an accidental flat spot anywhere. Yeah, nice. So this file actually has that included angle, so you don't have to rely on any um, super precise miter cuts on your table saw or anything. You just have to be able to make nice square stock or buy nice square stock. And you can go ahead and zip this project out using just Origin, basically. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, I got a little double-sided tape in the back there. We're going to make fresh grids uh, for everything. But this, so it doesn't really matter what, where our reference fa or what we're pushing up against. But this is a very repeatable project as long as you have something that you're pressing up against or aligning your edge to. Give that a good press. And hit it with a new scan. Nice. Yeah, that new scan just replaces that image so that you can actually see what you're working on. And this file does have both of those joints included. Um, we'll cut the dovetail first and come back to the other one. But the cool thing about this is that you can set it up, you can always leave it and then come back to it later. So we had that uh, when we were at the Florida school last weekend, fun time teaching Masterclass Live. We had mm -hmm. a couple of um, mortise and tenon classes in a row. And the cool thing about that was that we were able to set up that mortise and tenon once, do a bunch of mortise and tenons repeatedly, leave, come back the next day and cut even more. It's always remembering what you're doing. Yeah. All right, I'm doing a front side, front right grid for this particular piece. And when you go into the files, everything is labeled very well. Um, so, but pay attention to that right and left because, and right and left and top and bottom. We're focusing on the top and on the right hand side, we're looking for the top corner. Where are you? Top corner right. There we go. Bam. And everything's got those custom anchors built in, so you just want to drop that at zero, zero. Bam. All right. Swap back to my quarter inch bit. And Good practice is always to Z-touch. Okay. Nice, simple little shape here. We're going to cut it down to three quarters. And you know what? I'm going to use auto pass. Nice. Add a couple steps here. Sweet. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to go through. I'm going to uh, cut it to zero offset, test fit, and then probably fine tune it with maybe a three thou. Cool. Okay.
So using AutoPass to cut this negative dovetail here, um, that's going to automatically ramp down through three passes down to the bottom of this dovetail. And you can see a little bit of a gap between the blue area that Jake is cutting and that black line that represents the actual boundary of the cut file or the digital template. Um, so Jake's just wrapping up those three depth passes. And now what AutoPass is going to do is automatically adjust and do a nice light finishing pass all the way up to the edge of that template. And then we'll do a test fit. All right, other way. So these are surely the same size. So we're gonna have to sneak up on that. I say with a negative 0 0.003. Got negative 0 0.003. Cool. For this one, I can also turn auto pass off because I just want to go straight to it. Nice and snug. Beautiful. That is going to be great. I'm going to leave it that way. Yeah, nice. And remember, we don't want to pop this off quite yet because we have another joint on the other side that we're going to cut with the same grid. Exactly. OK, cool. That was some good action. Yeah. Get it started <laughs> with some good action. Nothing like a good dovetail. People have been asking about dovetails for like months on this show. We haven't cut a dovetail in a while. So yeah, I was we'll come back to your classic dovetail. Yeah, cool. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I think we should bring Leia back on and just have a little chat, yeah. right? Talk about this project, talk about her background, talk about all this stuff. I know you had some questions about digital design specifically also. Totally. And just design process in general. Yeah. Cool. Um, Leia, you're still there, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hard to tell with the cameras sometimes. Um, so you sent us some of your projects, and I would love to show these to the audience and just talk about their background, kind of where you were in your furniture journey at that time, because um, these are kind of in order, I think, uh, starting with this one, which I think is like classic Leia to me. Like, I always see these in your shop. We've got your shop tour coming up in a bit, by the way, but I always see these in your shop. Um, so could you talk to me about this? Uh, credenza here that I've got pulled up. Goose, we should show this off too, by the way. Uh, presentation mode. Thank you. Good reminder, Goose. Here we go. Yeah, yeah look at that. This is the uh, Peel Credenza. Um, I made the first one. It's actually behind me here uh, while I was at school uh, getting a master's degree in furniture design from RISD. Uh, the original was kind of this like taller, slimmer design. Uh, that I then translated to something lower and a bit more functional. Uh, and this was an assignment where we were given a word and we could do whatever we wanted with that word. It's just that word was supposed to be our inspiration. And for me, it was surfaces. So my thought was, how could I make a surface that feels like you're bending and breaking it, but still retains functionality in an object? Uh, how the heck do those doors work? <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually asked. It's a secret. Um, no, it's just uh, there are hidden magnets, and it's it's essentially like a reverse tambour, so Sweet. with magnets to hold it in place. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and the back, what material is that? Is that like a felt of some kind, or just a fabric? It's a heavy duty fabric. Yeah. Super I won't nice. tell you exactly what it is, but okay. as you should keep your no, cards yeah, close. keep your secrets. To keep some things to myself. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> no, it's such a fun opportunity for a pop of color too that you like. Mm -hmm. That's just great. Yeah. Um, the next one that we've got is this sketch, and I think this speaks to your design process a little bit. You have mm -hmm. mentioned you're an interdisciplinary designer, so you've got this really solid design background. So, where are you in the process here, and like, what are you working toward? Yeah, so this was um, kind of towards the beginning. I had a client that 
wanted basically like a, a music media station that converted into a bench when it wasn't in use. So it had to hold a record player as well as records and any other devices she wanted to hide below. Uh, and so I started with really rough sketches. This is, these are slightly more refined sketches when I gave her maybe five different concepts. Um, and then from there went into 3D modeling and just kind of figuring out how I'm actually going to build this thing uh, and then renderings and the final piece. Yeah. Just it's wanna... funny because I come from a very technical background and you and Jake are much more artistic than I am. And so when you mm -hmm. say rough sketches, this is what Jake comes to me with when he says, oh, I just have a rough sketch. <laughs> and it's this beautiful, beautiful thing. I want to highlight this is a hand drawing, right? Yes. This is yeah. gorgeous. Holy smokes. Thank you. Um, I did the uh, shading in Photoshop. I think. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> That's still very valid. <laughs> um, yeah. And here is that cabinet, like that bench and music station completely done. And this wow. is just incredible. I feel like this blue is a theme throughout your work. I do really like to include pops of color. Um, I like the natural wood green and the wood color, um, but then adding something just for a little bit of excitement and kind of create this happy modern feel. Yeah, yeah. nice. And then speaking of modern, I thought this was a very modern take on the table. This is clean as heck. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a dining table I just made for myself. Um, I really hated the one that we had. It was some something about it was cheap a long time ago so nice to have something solid wood that I've built myself designed and built myself um, and that's actually designed to flat pack so it comes apart um, and uh, I think it comes to like maybe five inches thick because the stretcher comes off of the legs um, and the legs come off of the top so. that's awesome very cool um, last time you were on, we were talking about some projects that you were working on at the time, and now we have photos, which I was very excited to see. So I'm going to pull this up. This is an incredible custom wine cellar, basically, or I mean, tell us more. Yeah, so I should say I did not do the woodworking on this. Um, this was a design project with a local company, and I've been doing just all of the design work like they get clients that want residential wine cellars uh, and they kind of have a rough idea of how many bottles they want what kind of storage they want um, what else it should house and then I work with my client to develop um, drawings and renderings and then they outsource the build mm -hmm. wow yeah I think this is really interesting because there's basically a very specific unit size that you're working with to repeat all through this project, right? The wine bottle. Yeah, which there are a lot of different wine bottle sizes. I've learned a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not totally un uh, uniform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, of and, course, you have the magnums on, on display right yep. there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, magnums, champagne bottles. There are like little half size bottles. What a perfect use of space for an otherwise difficult to use space. Yeah, this is a <laughs> photo of the same project, right? Just from a slightly different angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the next one here, this is like a whole entire wall. Yeah, this is actually a bottle shop. So um, okay. they have wine tasting and um, it's just a yeah, bottle shop, wine shop. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, that was a big project. That one took a long time. <laughs> Yeah, what was it like to incorporate the refrigerators underneath? Did you build the thing around the fridges or did you spec the fridges to match your design? Um, my client spec the fridges and I had to make sure that whatever I did, it would fit with them well and all the lines would be clean and continuous. Mm -hmm. You're working with so many lines plus the addition of the brick in the back and I feel like you really mm -hmm. took that into consideration really well. I love it. Thanks. We're just gushing over here, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, speaking of gushing, uh, everybody loves your projects on Shaper Hub. Uh, so we have a couple photos of those. For people who haven't seen them, Leia's done five projects now for us for Shaper Hub, I think. Yeah. I think this is the fifth. Five, um, yeah. Yeah, and so I've got a couple like really nice detailed photos of those. This one, we I believe we did a show on this a while ago. Yes. This was a table lamp that you designed and of the five, I think this one is the most intense. 
<laughs> this took me yeah. probably a solid 40 hour week to build. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you make your own lampshade? You make your own cord and wiring um, just to give you some, give you a feel for the amount of detail that goes into this. But the joinery in this is just absolutely incredible. I know we have a couple people on the forums who have made this one also, mm -hmm. which I'm really impressed by. Um, and a lot of your projects you make without Origin first, right? And then you adapt them for Origin. And this was yeah. one of those, right? Yeah, the lamp, a late table lamp. Um, that one I already had to design and then adapted it for Origin. So it's a bit smaller and just different joinery. Um, the original has some met more metal components. Mm -hmm. This one is a beginner classic, your Correlate Trivet. Um, where did the idea come from to have this kind of like mirrored design that comes through to the other side? Because I think that's really mm -hmm. compelling to people. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I was kind of inspired by more, which is um, the effect you get when you have two patterns that kind of collide and you mm -hmm. get this like almost like wavy, um, like a secondary pattern. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was, I was trying to think of a way that I could put, create that in a static form awesome and then this is a favorite at shaper hq specifically i think this mm -hmm. is a good balance of cool unique joinery and manageable project that you can finish in a day this is your uh, adjustable plant stand mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've seen so many plant stands that are kind of a similar form like it just they have these posts on the sides but it's they never fit with a pot unless it like comes with it. So I really wanted to create something that would fit with any pot rather than getting like a set. Yeah, I love that. I've had that same problem mm -hmm. and I didn't do anything about it. But now that problem is solved <laughs> for you. There just you make <laughs> just make Leia's uh, tangent, right? Adjustable plant stand. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and so we were talking about this project and we were talking about some projects that you've done in the past and how you designed those. I know, Jake, you had some questions on digital design. Yeah, you can you can really tell when you build and even if you just look at all of your projects, uh, the joinery feels very origin centric, like, you know, you have rounded <laughs> corners. Um, I want I was curious what your process for like planning that out is, mm -hmm. especially with this one, because you have like a double splay right. deal yeah this one was difficult because the original actually um sits on the floor and there are some compound angles and they're such a pain to cut um so i had to think of a way to use origin which is more two-dimensional and avoid using the table saw so um i guess with that i was just thinking of geometry and like how how to avoid only have one angled cut so i don't have a compound angle um a compound cut mm -hmm. and just i guess going from there like I, I have a 3d model that i built in fusion 360 and um i've worked on designs for cnc before so i knew kind of some of the rules around that um just before i had shaper origin and yeah. so it's just kind of all of these things these considerations Nice. Very cool. That was going to be my follow up question is what uh, CAD programming you use in Fusion mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 Um, I actually learned on um, Rhino and then I moved to Pro E, which is now called Creo. Um, and Fusion 360 is my favorite so far. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, joinery on Origin is a really interesting thing. And the way that you design joints for Origin, you could go down the rabbit hole like. Mm -hmm and spend years of your life figuring out joinery specific for this tool. One mm -hmm. of the things that I love about it is that there is the on-tool box joint maker. And then the other thing that I love about it is we have this incredible creative community that makes these projects that even if you don't know anything about joinery, you could just download and cut this incredible thing. So yeah, thanks again, Leia, for that. Um, I want to pull up this project mm -hmm. on Shaper Hub one more time, Goose. And... Again, to get this on your origin, all you have to do is hit sync to my files. Um, and it's going to say successfully added to your files. And it's going to show up on your router ready to cut. 
You're also going to want to hit download all files and that will get you this beautiful set of PDF instructions down here. So that's going to go straight to that. Um, and that's all you need to do to get started. You don't need to know how to design any of this stuff. Um, that's where Leia comes in. So that's really, really cool, I think. Um, I think we're ready to do a shop tour. So yes. Leia, you sent us a really cool recording of your shop. You want to give us like a quick little preamble about this space, how you found it, um, the kind of work sure. you do in there? Um, yeah, I found it through a mutual friend of um, Jameson Sellers who runs the, the space. And it's a shared workshop with nine people. Um, we all have pretty different projects, but mostly woodworking. We do some metal working in there as well. So it's kind of a short tour, but get an idea of where I make all of these things. Yeah. Awesome. And there's some really cool equipment in there. So let's go ahead and pull that up, Goose. Let's roll the tape. Welcome to my shared workspace here in Portland, Oregon. There are nine of us in here. We all share the machinery, which was purchased and is maintained by Jameson Sellers of Bolster Woodworking. The rest of us have about a 10 by 10 space. And here's mine. I'm working on some white oak desktops. I'm about to put some finish on these. And here's a bath tray I made recently. Collecting dust right now. Not a whole lot of projects going on. This is a peel credenza uh, prototype made from plywood. I usually keep all of my tools tucked away because it gets pretty dusty in here with so many people. But I have some prototypes sitting around and just materials and tools. Here's some other spaces. We have some furniture makers, industrial designer, artists, skateboarders. And a little more about the shop. We have a glue-up station, great for big panels. Some shared work areas. And then the usual machinery, bandsaw, drill press, table saw, joiner, planer, wide belt sander, which is really useful, especially for those desktops over there. And then we have a metal working area. We can do some TIG welding and some grinding. Some shared wood storage. We have people up in a loft on both sides. So we fit a lot in the space. And we have a shared flex space. Sometimes we'll have gallery shows in here, but most of the time it's just storage and uh, finishing area. And on really nice days, we like to keep the doors open, get some fresh air. Yeah, that's, that's about it. This is my space. Thanks for watching. Oh, so cool. The machines <laughs> in there are just massive. <laughs> yeah. I would love to have a planer like that in here. Sam, Shaper Sam is working on a big pocket door right now, and he's flattening the whole thing by hand. Mm, Poor guy. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice to have one of those big planers. Yeah, that's or the benefit of sander, having way. a shared space. Yeah. I don't have to purchase everything and maintain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, feel that. Um, cool. Well, uh, thank you so much for sending that. Everyone who's watching, if you want to send us a shop tour, send that to sessions at shapertools.com. Uh, we're looking for about three minutes, narrated, landscape mode. That's all there is to it. You don't have to do any fancy editing or anything like that. 
and in return we'll send you something nice yeah we love seeing the community shops so thanks for those keep them rolling um we're gonna roll into a couple of announcements speaking of keeping it rolling we'll do some announcements like we'll cut the other side of this joint and then we'll bring leia back on for some q a nice okay cool all right I'm first so things first okay usually we do the poll question first yeah that's true Okay, I want to do one thing before the poll question because it's related. So, here's a new thing. This is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Let's pop over to my laptop. This is Shaper Studio, and this is our latest release. Oh, we're looking goose. There we go. All right, you see this on the side? This is what you're looking at. New in studio. 15 new fonts. Uh, you asked. We listened. Three custom single-line fonts that are especially great for engraving with Origin. And 12 more fonts with support for non-Latin character languages. So that's really cool. And then, I mean, maybe even better, in my opinion, an improved font picker. So if you've been here with us from the start, you'll remember that it wasn't always the easiest to pick a font and see what it looked like. But now we've fixed that, and it's super easy. You can just hover over those fonts, and it will show you what it looks like. So let's do a quick demo here. I'm going to start a new design. This is, again, Shaper Studio, our simplified digital design tool for craftspeople. And I can add some text to my design just by clicking this button over here on the left. Let's just say, hello. Place text. Okay, cool. Now, check this out. Font picker. Whoa. This is cool. You can hover over these. You can also pick different styles of certain fonts. Um, and then we've got this category picker over here. So we can do single line fonts. And we've got three really cool ones. We've got this Sacramento script. We have this National Parks sort of single line font. And we have the font that also comes native on Origin. So we'll call it the Origin single line font. So you can, all three, you can use all three of these. You can do really cool engravings on things like cutting boards, personalization for your projects. Um, go ahead and check that out on Studio. And so here's the poll question. Um, what other fonts would you like to see in Studio? Goose is going to pull this poll question up. Do you want font names or do you want font styles? Or how should they answer this? That's a great question. Free response. <laughs> if you okay. have a really specific font, if you're a font nerd and you've got a really specific font, feel free to ask. If you've got kind of a style, feel free to ask. If you are just like all in on single line fonts, like make them all single line, then give us that. We'll take these. We read them all, by the way, at the end of the show. So... Yeah. Whatever you say, we're going to see that. Um, and if you enter this poll, that's going to enter you into the giveaway at the end of the show. Okay. Speaking of giveaways, I'm going to save the best for last. Okay. Fine. Speaking of giveaways, <laughs> though, it is our spring deal yes. right now. And we are given a lot away with that. So um, let's pop over here to the spring deal page on the laptop here. You can find this at shapertools.com slash spring hyphen deal. Um, spring dash deal and ted's gonna pop a link to that in the chat this is on from now through march 27th and you can save over 600 dollars during our spring deal let's explore um cool so what are we looking at 150 dollars system discount when you buy origin with workstation and plate uh, free project plans for our free premium projects which uh free during the promo free plans for premium projects which walks you through uh, two really cool start to finish projects with Origin in a really nice step by step way that's gonna help you learn. Uh, an accessory package that comes with a, I think this is the mini sustainer, mm -hmm. a roll of double sided tape, and two router bits. One year of Shaper Studio for free, uh, fully featured. Again, remember, everybody can always try out Shaper Studio, no credit card required at any time. Um, but this is a free year of fully featured Shaper Studio, so you can check out all those fonts and the font picker I just showed you. And I saved the best for last, two training classes with your favorite origin instructors, Jake and Russ. Start to finish. Fresh, Start to fresh finish. out the box to Rockstar origin user. Yeah. So we're going to do those in a couple of weeks. We'll schedule those and get you on for those. Um, so, okay, spring deal. Check that out. And, uh, okay. Are you ready for the box challenge? Yeah. Are you jumping out <laughs> yeah, of your seat right. yet? Okay, cool. So remember, our box challenge was basically last month. It was like the month of February-ish. Um, we took submissions via the internet with the hashtag ShaperBoxChallenge. People could also send them to us. 
We got hundreds of submissions for all from all over the world. It made it really hard to decide. Uh, as a recap, first place was a thousand dollars to the Shaper store. So that's a sweet discount on an origin or like crazy router bits or workstation and plate, all kinds of good stuff. Mm-hmm. Second place was a Festool CT MIDI yep. dust collector. Third place was a cool package of Bessie clamps. And we threw an honorable mention in there because we just had to. And so that honorable mention is going to get a trace kit. Okay. Uh, so without further ado, should we have further ado? What is a do? <laughs> I don't know. Does let's anybody show, ask that question? Let's show let's show off these winners. Okay. Um let's do it backwards, right? Yes. Backwards. Okay. Yeah. Honorable mention first. So check this box out. If this honorable mention doesn't blow your mind, by the way, that should queue up like how good the rest of these are gonna be. This is a sweet circular bent laminated box. And this was an email submission. So shout out to email submissions. Check out the process on this. This is just absolutely wild. And this is from Sarah Kinley. So thank you, Sarah. We'll be reaching out to you for that trace kit to get that to you. The vacuum bag here and the like the shaper. build up form here. That shaper just setup wild. is wild. <laughs> Look at this vacuum bag. Okay, cool. All right. Third place. Also bent, also laminated. A little smaller. The photos really got me on this one. So dramatic. So very practical. Little pencil case. And now this is the cool thing. Check out this mechanism. I think that is a pencil sharpener. How slick is that? <laughs> very cool. I can't even wrap my head around how they made that corner joint. Mm-hmm. It's so clean. Carefully, right? That's Carefully. the joke. Carefully. Second place is D019 Studio, this wild end grain walnut box. And I think this end grain is just so clean. Look at that. And then with this scalloped inlaid top. A little bit of purple heart pop. Mm-hmm. Brusso quadrant hinges. Love those. You can find those in the Shaper Hub hardware catalog to install those super easily. Yeah, look at that. You just drop those right in there. And then, drum roll please, the winner is Brian the Prion with, well, let's go back to the front. Look at this. Look at this crazy box. I don't even have words for it. So it has this kind of rippled texture. It has this inlaid ginkgo leaf. It has this beautiful joinery and the pinning. It has like a little fabric upholstered inlay in the bottom there. There's just so much in this tiny box and I love it. Okay, we got some cool hand drawings. Love to see that. Um, This is how the ripple was made. So it's on the lathe and then offset, which I think is so freaking cool. Look at that. And then inlaid using origin, which I also think is just cool as heck. Yeah, look at that. And that's a small little stem right there. Yeah. That's a small router bit. And I love how that's just slightly proud. Super creative, super pleasing to look at and I imagine to to use. And so, Brian, uh, I think Katie will be reaching out to you. We've got a thousand bucks to the Shaper store coming your way. So thanks so much for the submission. I love it. It's beautiful. Nice. Thank you, everyone, that participated in the box challenge. These are so fun for us. I hope they're fun for you. If you didn't win, don't worry, because we're going to do more of them. Cool. Um, Should we get back to it and go ahead and cut that last joint? Yeah, let's do it. All right, nice. So remember, we have this all squared up already from before, so we can just get right back into it. Don't peel it up unless you want to regrid. Exactly. Um, Just for context again, that's my file that I'm working on here. Got this big old pocket, and as I hover over it, I get that very handy little orange uh, exclamation point saying, whoa, you're cutting too deep, because the encoded depth on this pocket is 0.375. Nice. So you're going to go ahead and clear out that pocket, then you're going to go ahead and trim off the end of this, right? I'm going to do pocket, I'm going to do inside, and then there is, I'm just going to do a start-stop cut. 
start here, cut across, and end right here. Yeah, nice. Now, here's, and Leah, please chime in if I'm going to do this wrong, but I'm going to put, I'm thinking I'm going to put like a negative 3 thou offset on both parts mm -hmm. just to ease any interference that comes together. Yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Normally, we usually have, you know, we do negative offset on one piece and leave the other true to size at zero. But for this one, because it is more like a puzzle piece, I think I'm going to think it'll work out. Okay. Nice. Let's hit it. Nice. So again, for everybody watching at home, this is a pocketing cut with Origin. The way a pocketing cut works is just like your standard plunge router, that spindle is locked right to the center of Origin's corrective range. And then that corrective range kicks in when Jake butts up against the edge of that pocket. Um, and what that does is it allows you to rough out a large quantity of material relatively quickly and easily with great accuracy, um, but also leaving a little bit of a buffer so that you can come back and do that inside cut, which is going to bring you right up flush to the lines of your joinery. So he's roughing all that out. That looks like a good pocket cut to me. Now we're going to go ahead and switch that pocket cut to an inside cut and Here we go. I believe what we're doing is trimming this to length now. Yeah, nice. Uh, we're coming in and finishing up the joinery. And the nice thing about Origin always is if you get a retraction like that, it is going to automatically uh, retract and save your work if you go outside of the line. How are we looking there? Spot on. All right. Pop off the excess. Wiggle my way under there. There we go. Cool. Looks pretty good. So this is the top part, so it's going to be obviously shorter. The lower section is quite longer, hence the double splay action. Cool. And we can just go ahead and get this other side set up. It's going to be very similar. You're going to go ahead and make the grid. You're going to place the file, the custom anchor point, as specified in the PDF. Uh, and we're going to cut the other side of this half flat. But all there is to it is basically cutting a pocket and then doing the inside cuts. All right. Some of this dust off. Handy dandy double sided tape. I see we've got some really good questions coming in already. Great. What do you think if we throw one in while you're uh, doing the grid on this one? By all means. Okay, Leia, I've got a question for you. Um, this is a question from Robert W which is what led you to woodworking? That's a good question. Um, well, my undergrad was industrial design and we learned a lot about 3D modeling and sketching and just designing products. And we had a few projects in the wood shop. Um, we would also learn to like make 3D or make uh, just small models of, of our pieces. And I always loved the, the ones that involved woodworking and they really, gravitated towards furniture. Uh, and I think it's really important to be able to build things to design them if they're going to be used um, by by people because 
you have to understand kind of the rules around making and manufacturing and um if you're going to design something it should be something that's feasible to create in real life so nice so a lot of woodworking practice in the early days of your design education just mm -hmm. and you just went deeper from there yep pretty much sweet let's check back in with you here jake so you've got that scan you've got that grid yep. and now we're going to drop that file on that zero zero point yeah we're looking for the rail which are the long vertical pieces mine is a lot shorter for practicality's sake um it was the right top mm -hmm. rail bingo still got that custom anchor point so i'm just dropping it at zero zero cool and we have the same bit in there it's already z touched so all we need to do is update that depth and oh you know what is it already z touched because you re you regridded this it never hurts to re z touch it never hurts at least i can't think of a situation where it would ever hurt all right cool here we go So this project as a whole, everybody, is pretty simple. Uh, there's just a lot of joints that you've got to cut, but if you can follow along with this dovetail and do the top right and left and then the bottom right and left dovetail, then follow along with this half lap joint and do the top right and left and bottom right and left and keep all those straight, then you can do this at home. So one of the tricks here is gonna be also maybe to mark your work as you go along and keep those joints written down, listed somewhere, go through the PDF, literally step by step. It's something like 40 to 50 pages, this PDF. So it's very complete. Um, it'll tell you everything that you need to know to get this project done in your shop. Before I pry anything up, test fit. Oh, that's just... That's pretty good. Aces. I think we could peel that up. I think so, too. We'll recap. That was negative 0 0.003 on both pieces. And that feels just right. Knock any fuzz off. And then I love how the, the, the two corners, that super acute angle and then the, the wider acute angle really just come together perfectly there. That's awesome. That's I'm gonna awesome. put a little piece of double sided tape to act as a glue just to hold it together just to hold it together just hold it together <laughs> <laughs> it's live everybody i suppose if you wanted to you could even pin this corner too that would be cool as heck i did consider putting 
a pin in there. Yeah. Part of the design, but I decided to keep it simple. Yeah. And take this home. Right, because we never did the final fit on that. I don't know why we keep putting the mallet away from the sessions bench. I always need it. I think it's inside out for what it's worth because the chevron's supposed to go down. So this would be this way. There you go. You're it's keeping those right. joints straight, everybody. Ooh. Oh, squeaky. And because it protrudes a little bit. That is what we like to see. Nice. Double-sided tapes. Not doing it, really. But. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Love that. There it is. So um, as a reminder for everybody, let's look at this project one more time on Shaper Hub. So this is what you're working toward. It's four of these corner sets. This is the array wall closet. I guess a few, a few of the things we didn't cut on the back panel just for the sake of time. We have the two front-facing coat hooks. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, as you're actually cutting out the profile, you can go ahead and swap to a T-slot bit and cut uh, some, key, some keyholes in the back to actually mount the whole thing. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Leia, we wanted to thank you so much for joining us and for making another awesome project. Um, for everyone who's uh, watching this later, by the way, because everybody who's watching this live, we're about to roll into a Q&A, and Leia's going to hang on for that. But for everybody who's joining us later on YouTube, thank you so much. Yeah. And Leia, if they're, inter if they're interested, where can they find more of your work? Uh, my website is leiaksamic.com. Excellent. Thank you Same so much. Same for Instagram. So. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for hanging out. Okay. See everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for joining.